Hi everyone, this is Marty with Pezzadoodle Designs and I am here today to show you a few things that you can do with ultra thick embossing enamel or UD and the first thing we're going to do is a favorite of mine, I've been doing it for some time it's called the cracked glass effect so I've got a stamped image here that I've colored up nicely this image is available at Susanna's Custom Art and Card Design along with several other adorable little houses and shops and stuff. But I've colored it up with colored pencil. Use your coloring method of whatever you prefer. And then I'm just going to go over the entire thing with the Versamark or any sort of embossing ink that you have that you like to use. This is a clear very sticky type ink. So I'm going to make sure I get a good coating over my entire little image here. And it's hard to see because it's clear. I just go over it a few times. And then we're going to pour on the UD. Take my chunks out from the last thing I did. Now this is just like embossing powder, if you've used embossing powder, except these are much larger granules, so they don't stick quite as easily. So what I normally do is I do several layers and the other important thing to do is to keep your heat gun quite a distance when you first start so that you're not blowing this powder off because you're going to want a nice thick coating to do this technique. So we're going to start heating this first layer. And let me back up and see if you'll be able to see how high I have my heat gun. But I'm holding it pretty high up because I don't want to blow it all off. While your surface is still hot, you're going to sprinkle another layer on. And I do this at least three times to get a nice thick coating. And again, start you're heating at a distance. Okay, now we have a nice thick coating of beauty on here. All of the little grains are melted. Make sure you don't have any that are still unmelted. And we are going to stick that in the freezer. Not for long, three, four, or five minutes, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, here's our piece out of the freezer. He's a bit curled. Now we're just going to start bending it gently and cracking your surface. And let's see if you guys can see those nice cracks and shatters. And this is just something different, something fun to do. Jazz things up a bit. But I always thought this was a really cool technique. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is very similar. I'm going to show you how to make a little tile. Let's see if 
I can get this to focus. There we go. You see that shimmer? And the glossy surface? This is just a square piece of chipboard. I got these out of a Maya Road chipboard pack that Susanna had in her store. Any of those Maya Road chipboard pieces will work for this. It does not have to be a square tile. It can be any shape you want. The technique is what's important. I learned this technique from the book Paper Transformed by Julia Andrus. She's the creator of Perfect Pearls. Now you can use Perfect Pearls. You can use um, Primary Elements. On mine I used Primary Elements. But we're going to start with some ink. Any ink. It, really doesn't matter at all and you're going to add some color to your base pay attention to the colors you pick some colors when mixed make mud not as pretty I'm using these because if they mix up, they make orange. Orange is good. Going to add a third color here. This is a much darker color. I'm just going to add a little bit. So I don't want to overpower my other colors necessarily. So just play with your color on your little chipboard piece until you're happy with the way it looks. Darken up my yellow a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to leave them just like that. Again, the exact color is not really that important. You want sort of a variation of color. Now I'm going to stamp over it with my Versamark. Any embossing sticky ink will do. If you use pigment ink or distress ink to color your piece, that is sticky enough. You don't need the Versamark. Then we're going to cover, cover, cover with UD. We want a nice thick layer so that it suddenly turns into a glass tile not a real glass tile obviously but that's the look we're going for okay move that out of the way lay them down carefully I hate when I drop them and all my UD flies off not awesome Okay, we're going to heat this up and again start from a distance because that's very thick. So not all of it is sticking to that Versamark that we put down. Start very high up and gradually move closer. The first speck or two of beauty that you see flying off into the distance, back up a little bit, just a skosh. And keep heating and then gradually move back in and then you'll be able to um, fairly quickly get right up in close and get it all melted. Okay, now we're all, mute, all melted up. And seriously, seriously, do not touch molten tutti. Once it's cool, again, cover it with some Versamark. Versamark's awesome stuff. I have Summer Breeze and Lemon Drop Luminart Primary Elements. Just brush those on. Again, randomly. Obviously, the Lemon Drop is yellow. That doesn't mean you have to put it over the yellow ink. The key here is just some random 
organic spots. Okay, I didn't cover the entire thing. Left some spots free. Now you're going to put more UD on top of this. However, there is nothing on here to make it stick. And if you tried to put Versamark over that, you'd really just take your mica powder right off. So we're going to have to do the heating at a distance trick. Make sure your tile is very well covered, pretty thick layer. <clears throat> and when you melt this, it's not only going to set the primary elements that you put on there, but it's going to have an interesting reaction with them and cause them to sort of move and break apart and make little puddles, which is what makes this so pretty because you have all these different designs and stuff. So again, heat from a distance. As your UD melts and gets stuck together, you can get in real close. And I don't know if you can see it well on the camera, but I can move my shimmer and my UD puddle with the force of the air from the heat gun. I can also throw on a little bit more, make it melt again in a different way. Spreads out that shimmering mica powder. So you get this sort of almost marbled kind of a look. Again, let that cool. Do not touch. Do not touch. If you need to move it out of the way because you want to make some more, like me, then use, you know, the end of your paintbrush. But be very careful. Alright, we'll go on to our next fun technique with UD. Okay, here's our next technique. I have another one of those really cute stamps in that set of buildings from Susanna. And I have this Delicata Gold Metallic Ink. We're going to put that on the stamp. Ink it up really well. In my melting pot, I have melted some UD. And we're just going to pour it right over the stamp. Melt more than you think you'll need. Because if you end up not having enough for what you want to cover, and you try to go back and add some more in a second go round, it will break and crack. So I'm just going to drag it a little bit where it's running off. It's already starting to harden. So we'll let that cool and then I'll show you what happens. Another thing that you can do is that you can pour the, this melted UD into a mold. These molds are sold in Susanna's shop as well. And I'm just going to pour really slowly because I don't want it to overflow. Got a little cat hair in there. Typical around this house. 
But remember, you don't want to have to do two coats because they will not bond for whatever reason. So I'm just going to put a couple in here. Let those harden. Now what if you want to color this? Never ever put anything liquid into hot UD. It will explode. So I'm going back to my Luminart Primary Elements powders and I'm going to do that first. You could use Perfect Pearls as well. So I'm just going to dump some in. I'm going to attempt to get that cat hair out. The cat hair is optional. Now the even better way to do this would be to mix the powder in before you melt it. But since mine was already melted, I'm just going to go ahead and try this. See if I can get a nice purple flower in my mold. This little spatula comes with the melting pot, so it's really nice, very handy. It won't melt like your other tools, like the one I should have just not used. All right, and I'm just going to pour this right into another of my little flowers here, my mold. There's some little chunks. I'm just going to smush those down. Just a little bit at a time so that we don't overflow. Okay, we'll let those harden. Let's go back over to our stamp here. And it's nice and hardened. So you peel it right off. And you have a really cool image here. The gold is highlighted, is highlighting the image so that you can really see it. And from here you can do a variety of things. You can use it just like this or you could rub some perfect pearls or primary elements over the raised surfaces to get a different look. Some of these excess pieces I'm just going to trim You could sand them down a little bit. Very cool effect. I love this. Now any excess UD once you're done, like these puddles here, don't throw that away. You can still reuse it at least once. It will turn amber the more times it's heated and the longer it's heated. But conserve as much as you can. When you're done, just simply scrape all of the UD out 
of your pot onto your craft mat and let it harden. I can put this back in here, melt it down again. Okay, set this aside. See what our flowers are doing over here in this mold. So you can see this is a great mold. It's got a lot of different flowers all in one mold. So you can really sit down and make a bunch of different ones all at once. Let's pop these out. So you have a perfect little flower. These kind of embellishments are so popular right now. check on these. I really want to see how these come out. How pretty is that? Already colored. The advantage of doing your own also is that you can make a perfectly coordinated project. You can use the primary elements in so many different ways that everything will match up, look good together. There's our little daisy. Cool, Mom. Thank you. I've got one more thing to show you. We're going to make a little charm. Okay, I have my melting pot again. This is a piece of nonstick craft sheet that I just cut to fit. I believe Ranger is going to come out with some ready-made that'll probably fit even better, but that's my fix for now. And inside the pot, I have a little charm, a little bezel, and I have an eraser under the back foot of this pot so that it is flat because normally it tilts towards the back so that your UD stays in the back of the pot. But for this, we want it to be flat. So, going to start by sprinkling some UD right into that bezel and it's going to melt pretty quickly, really. So it'll melt and flatten out. And then the fun thing is that after this is all melted, you can embed all sorts of stuff in here. So we're going to do a couple of different things. I think we're just about full. Now the first thing I want to do is add a little bit of color. Of course, I'm going back to my primary elements. I'm going to take this out. That's the handy part of this little sheet I have in there. And we're going to let that cool slightly. Very, very similar to what we did with the chipboard. So I have Lime Squeeze and Golden Monarch primary elements. And then to make it even more fun, you can throw in some glitter, some micro beads, um, vintage glass glitter. And what I have is actually some Gala Glitz, which is from art glitter. So I'm just tapping my brush and adding a little bit of powder. As it cools you can spread some of that around if you want or you can leave it as sprinkles.
and then we're going to set it back into the pot. Put it down a little bit so it's a little more even with my tabs. So we're going to heat that back up. And then like before, with the little chipboard tile, we'll put some more beauty on top. And then I have my Gala Glitz. I'm using a pink one. It's got um, vintage glass shards. It's got a couple of different colors of microbeads. The glitter is in a couple of different sizes. Now you can leave it like this. Once the UD melts again, it will set those primary elements. Or you can sprinkle some more on top, just a little because our bezel is fairly full. And it will move and break up those primary elements. And you'll get a nice marbled looking sort of pattern to it. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the glass shards. Put them in a couple of places. Not too much. I don't want to cover everything up. There you could if you wanted. Sprinkle just a tiny bit over the beads or glitter or whatever you've sprinkled in because you want it to be a nice smooth surface sort of capturing the items and then don't think that this is just for jewelry makers and oh this isn't apply to me because I make cards charms are very popular for adding as embellishments You can add it to the top of a tag. I think Tim Holtz does that a lot. Lots of ways you can use these. Once you're happy with the look, again lift it out by the tabs and let it cool. Don't touch it. Please don't touch it. I don't want anybody leaving me a comment saying, I burnt myself, you didn't tell me. So we'll let that cool and then we'll have a really cool little charm to use in a project or make on, put on a necklace, make anything you want with that. I hope I have shown you a number of different things that you can do with your UD to get you guys excited and get you started on having some fun with this. If you have any questions, do let me know. The products that I've used, the bezel, the delicata, the stamps, the primary elements, and of course the UD you can all get at Susanna's Custom Art and Card Design. She is bringing in tons of new stuff in all different kinds of areas and expanding the mixed media stuff. So I really encourage you to browse around there and see what she has. Thanks so much.